guys welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you guys are new if you guys have been following my channel for a while you guys will know that every single year i do an updated freelance makeup kit video it is now halfway through the year so i feel like it's about time to film one of these for anybody who is new to my channel i am just primarily a bridal makeup artist and do occasional photo shoots but i don't do like high fashion shoots or editorial shoots i don't need like crazy pigments or glitters or fun colors or anything i specialize in medium to full neutral glam so that is how i curated my kit this is the bag that I carry. I got it off of Amazon. It's the Relavel makeup backpack. I travel quite frequently for my job since I do a lot of weddings. So I wanted something that was very convenient for me to travel around with. You can see that this all transforms into a backpack. It does have these padded straps on it. There is buckles on the bottom that just converts into shoulder straps for you and works exactly like a regular backpack would. There is a pocket on the bottom, but I've never actually used it for anything. It does have two side pockets. One of the side pockets, I carry makeup remover wipes. I got like a crap ton of these at one point in time. I got the MAC Micellar makeup remover wipes. I like these way better than the original ones. The micellar ones are a lot more gentle on the skin and also don't cause allergic reactions. The other ones, I don't know what kind of ingredients they have in them, but I know of a lot of people who are allergic to them. You can also put tissues in here if you want to. Unzip this and then feed the tissues out through this little slot. I've never used it that way, but that's the way that you can use it if you want to. If you flip around to the other side, there's another side pocket. I keep tissues and paper towels in here just to clean up after myself, obviously. Then there is a clear pocket. You can use this for IDs or you can also use it for your business cards, which I just put my business card right there. This is what I like the most is that it has so many freaking pockets. A little zipper pouch in front. Um, I don't really use it for anything, but there's a possibility for it there. Side pocket pocket right here. Um, I usually store my bride's contracts right there because I fill out like consultation sheets for them after the bridal previews. I love this pocket the most. There is a mesh pouch that you can put a whole bunch of things in. I usually just carry a thing full of these individual lash glue pods. I recently found these from Family Dollar and I carry them around to put in people's touch-up kits for people that have lashes on. Sometimes I get clients who don't want lashes, but if they do, I'll go ahead and put them in the touch-up kits for them. I have oil blotting sheets. These ones are ones I just got off of Amazon. They're the green green tea and Nora ones. I think that's what they're called. <laughs> I use these in my touch-up kits. I do have tampons in here too because I work with a bunch of females. Like as a makeup artist, you're also responsible for the well-being of other people. It's nice to have, you know, just emergency kind of things. This is also why I carry other things that are kind of essential to health too. I carry a first aid kit. I've had this box forever. I think I got it at Target. And these are Advil. Um, I usually carry Advil for those if they have like stomach cramps. I also carry little pills of Benadryl as well in case anybody has an allergic reaction. But then the rest of it is just like first aid stuff. So I have like alcohol pads, there's band-aids in here, there's gauze tape and pads, anything that you would possibly need to have for somebody. I carry mints. Um, my favorite are the icebreaker spearmints. I just find these to be the most pleasant to have. I'd rather have somebody suck on a mint than try to chew gum while I'm trying to do makeup. So that's why I carry mints instead of gum. Touch-up kits are right here. I did a whole entire video over these touch-up kits and what I included in them. So I'll just link up the video up above. I also carry around a battery powered fan. I think this is so nice. So I got this from Timu. I use this though, either to dry off like eyelash glue or something if it's not drying fast enough or drying off setting spray after I spray people. Then um, I have this bag. It's just a mesh bag. I got it from Ulta originally, but if you Google like mesh bags on Amazon or something, you can come up with something similar. This one I use for all my dirty brushes just so I separate them from the clean ones. Then I always have these three things going on. So I have a tie to go pen. People get any stains out on the go. I have a regular pen and then I also have a Sharpie. Just never know when people need stuff. For the main part of the bag, I usually carry the silicone mat in here. Um, I used to carry black towels with me at all times, but I realized that that wasn't like 100% sanitary. I'll usually carry a pack of disinfectant wipes so I can wipe this off. It's about this big and I'll set everything on top of it. I always like to have some sort of mat though. That way it keeps everything super hygienic. Okay, I'm gonna start up top first. I have a mirror sitting here. The mirror actually came from my old extra large Relavel case, but I don't think they actually come with them anymore. I would not recommend using palettes like the ones that have mirrors inside of them for people to look at because if somebody drops that, you're gonna be in a world of hurt. These are clips that I got from the Artist Kit Company. They just help hold back people's hair. These are Rain M Eye stuff. So I have waterproof mascara. This is the L'Oreal Lash Paradise waterproof mascara. I don't ever carry regular mascaras because all my 
vents need waterproof. Um, and then I also have the Makeup by Mario Brow Setter. This thing is so, so good. This one's for like natural everyday hold. These are all the eyeliners that I carry. So these two are the Usum double-ended eyeliner pencils. This one's in the shade gold brown. And then this one is in fire garnet. Bronzy color with some golds and then like a brown color with the gold. Then this one is the Maybelline Tattoo Studio Liner. It's in a white shade, just in case I need it to put like in the water line or something. Not asked for super often, but I do have one. Then I have the Urban Decay 24-7 Glide On Eyeliner Pencil, and that's in the shade zero. And then I have all my lip liners in these pouches. These two are the Usum Double-Ended Lip Liners, which Usum makes like really solid lip liners. I really like them a lot. This one is in the shade Plum. It has like a darker, almost like a wine color. And then this one is like a mid-tobe mauve kind of tone. This is my red pencil that I carry, so it has a lighter red and a darker red. Then this one is the Urban Decay Conspiracy Lip Liner Pencil. This one is super great for those with like olive kind of tones. These are the Makeup by Mario lip liners that I just got recently, but I'm using a ton. This one is in the shade Travis. Then I have Dark Chocolate. So yeah, those are all my medium tone pencils. And then these ones are all the nude pencils that I have. All of these are Makeup by Mario. This one's in the shade Dimitri. Then I have Rich Mauve, Hugh, and Johnny. I'm still not sure if I like the tones of these or not. I love ones that are like almost a brown mauve kind of tone, but these are more peachy kind of tones and they tend to look really orange on people with fairer skin. So I'm actually thinking about switching to the Makeup Forever artist pencils because I've heard really great things about them and I get a pro artist discount on them. So I might as well try them out. I need to use these first though. So I'm just gonna like deal with it for the time being. I'm trying to use up all my products before I start buying more because otherwise I'm just gonna be overspending on my kit. <laughs> Comment below if you can relate. <laughs> when you originally get this bag, it's a set style bag. So it has a bunch of foam inserts in it, but those always get so messy and so dirty. They're so hard to clean. They always get stained. So I removed all of the foam inserts and then replaced them with all of these plastic containers on the inside. And now they're like a lot easier to clean. All of these containers right here are actually pencil holders. I got them off of Amazon. This big one right here actually came from a bathroom organizer set that is sold out on Amazon currently. Came with this set right here that has the six different dividers. They haven't restocked it in like over six months. So I don't know if you can actually get something like that anymore. But I do know that Muji, if you guys have a Muji store near you, they sell something identical to this one and this one. I just don't have the links for them because that's not where I got them from. This one came from Muji. I had to order them offline. They're the cotton bud organizer case. I have this one and then there's also this one too. It just doesn't have a lid on it And then these cases are from the artist kit company. They're the box 1.0 It just makes it a little bit easier to get disposables out of here um, I had those fishing tackle boxes for the longest time, but I wanted to actually have my disposables in here so I could directly get them out of my case and I wouldn't have to take up any table space. I have spoolies and liners. The spoolies are um, these ones. I just get them off of Amazon. They're actually pink tipped. When you're dipping in mascara, if you have the black ones, sometimes it's really hard to see how much mascara you actually picked up since the mascara is also black. That's why I have the pink ones so I can see how much product I'm picking up. And then I also have these liner brushes. Um, they're actually disposable eyeliner brushes, but I don't use them for eyeliner. I use them to reapply lash glue in case the client's lashes lift because it's important not to actually double dip in the lash glue. And then these, I have lip wands and Q-tips. Obviously lip wands are pretty self-explanatory. I get these from Amazon. And then I also get the Q-tips um, from any one of my drugstores near me, like CVS, Walgreens, etc. Always oh, just nice to have both. These ones are also disposables. They are um, cotton pads, which I use for toner and prepping people's skin, or I can remove eye makeup with them. And then these are all little wedge sponges that I use for makeup applications. And these are all from CVS. They're the Beauty um, 360 brand, um, but they're also called One and Other in some CVSs too. But this is what the other cotton butt organizer looks like from Muji. I just have a whole bunch of things stacked inside of here. I usually do skin prep first before I even start with the eyes or anything. That way the skincare has enough time to sink in. First of all, I can't Carry the Inglot Duraline. This is to revitalize any cream products. You can also convert any powder shadows into pigments or liners or something, which I've had to do recently for photo shoots. So it's just a very nice versatile mixing medium if you need it to be. I carry an eyelash curler. This is the Tweezerman eyelash curler. These are all little sample jars that I got from Amazon that I ended up gluing together with Gorilla Glue. So they make these nice stacks. This is the Clinique All About Eyes eye cream. This is the regular one, not the rich version. This is more of the gel, like lightweight texture one. And this is the only eye cream I found that you can apply concealer over top of that doesn't actually make anything pill up or separate. 
This lip scrub is the Fresh Sugar Lip Scrub. Um, I use this sometimes if people have like super sharp lips. Then I also have a lip mask to go on top of it. This is the Paw Paw Shea Butter. I can use that on like hands, lips, whatever. I wouldn't say that it's the most hydrating thing for your lips, but it's just a more versatile kind of product for me. Next, I have the Bobbi Brown Face Base right there. I don't think I'm gonna keep it in my kit to be totally honest. I like it, I just don't reach for it all the time. Same with this one too. This is the e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer. This is the original one and I thought I would use this more, but I really don't get a ton of use out of it. This is one of my favorite primers. It's the e.l.f. Gripping Primer. I used to use the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Primer, but guys, the e.l.f. ones perform exactly the same way. So I usually use this. I did have the blue one, the original one, but this is the one that's made with niacinamide. This is the NARS Mattifying Primer. This one works super, super well on those with oily skin. I also have a makeup remover. This is the Lancome Bifacil Makeup Remover in here. Then we also have the Belief Aqua Balm. It's the original one, not the moisturizing balm, just the aqua balm, the one with the gel texture. I use this all the time on people with really dry skin. Since it's a gel texture, it doesn't feel super heavy, which is really nice. It can also double as a primer. Next, I have the Rose Fresh Deep Hydration Toner, which is really amazing. I use this for everybody. The only people I don't use this on is if they're allergic to rose water. Um, so I'm thinking about trying out the Laneige Toner. I've been thinking about getting that because a couple of different makeup artists now have like raved about it. So I'm thinking about getting that, although I really freaking love my rose toner though. Um, so far, it hasn't been a problem for anybody, but I do ask if anybody's sensitive or allergic to anything. Then these are all my like sanitizing sort of products, I guess. So I have the Hemp's Sweet Pineapple and Honey Melon hand sanitizer in here. I just love the smell of it. These are bottles I got from the Artist Kit Company. All of these are. Um, so yeah, I keep two bottles full of 70% alcohol. Always want to carry 70% because if you get more than that, it's going to dry too fast to sanitize anything. If you get less than that, it's not going to sanitize it enough. I have a whole entire video on makeup kit sanitation though. So I'm not going to go over like any sanitation things. I'll just link up a video for you guys if you want to check it out. This is the setting spray in here. I have the milk mattifying setting spray right now. It's honestly pretty universal. It works on dry skin too. And I do have a bottle full of water. I do use it for wetting sponges down because that's how I usually apply foundation and concealer. Okay, I think I'm gonna go over in this section next. All this is eyes and then all this is complexion. So I kind of have it grouped out like in the way that I work, which is nice. So I'll go through these containers first. All of these are from the Artist Kit Company. They're the palette 1.0s and then the long ones right here are the palette 2.0s. So all of these are lipstick palettes. I'm just gonna link all my Kitmas videos, I think. You guys can check out like what specifically I have in all of these palettes because I did all the swatches for these. All of these bronzers are cream bronzers. They're all from Tower 28. And then I have one in here that's one of the cream foundation sticks from Merit Beauty. Then I also have all of these brow powders, which are from Senna Cosmetics. They came in the brow book by them. Then I have all of these, which are all the Graftobian cream color correctors. They come in two different palettes. I have the light and the dark one in here. I don't use them that often. Like color correctors are not one of the things that I gravitate toward, but it's just nice to have them in case. Over here are the Makeup by Mario Master Eye Prep and Set. So I have the light one, the medium one, and the deep one. I really wish they wouldn't call it deep though, because it's actually not that deep. I really wish that they would expand it and do like one other color. I'm still experimenting with these guys. I'm not sure if I 100% like these, but they come with two different cream eyeshadow primers, and then they come with a powder on the bottom to set them. Don't think I'm gonna keep these after I use them, but I do wanna use them up for the time being. Probably gonna switch back to the P. Louise bases because I haven't used those in such a long time, but those are the only products that I felt like my eyeshadow really just glided on. Then since these don't go deep enough and I might possibly need like other things, I actually got the MAC Studio Fix concealers in like the very, very deep shade, but all of these shades are pretty universal to use for like other things. So that's why I also got this as well. There's also a black in here too, which I'm assuming can be used like to deepen up lipsticks or something too. My biggest tip is like try to find products like this that are very multitasking that you can turn into other things. That way you don't need to have as many products in your kit and it's a little bit less expensive. The other bases that I have are all of the MAC Paint Pots, not all of them, but at least five of them. These are really good for people with oily eyelids. So this is the shade Soft Ochre. Then I have Paint Relief, Vintage Selection, which Vintage Selection I do use quite often because it's like a shimmery base. So if I apply that on first, it intensifies the sparkle. Then I have the shade Groundwork and then it's Fabstract on the bottom, which is like a deep brown kind of color. Very good for smoky eyes on the go. And then I also have Loose Pigments in here. So this is the shade Crystal by Anastasia. I don't know if Anastasia still sells their pigments, but I do have them. MAC Naked. Um, then I also have MAC English Guilt, which I am running out of because it's a limited edition color. I really wish they would carry it permanently, but they do not. Then I have Sand, which is an Anastasia pigment. And then I have MAC Tan at the bottom, which is my all-time favorite for like deeper skin tones. Then um, I have all of my liners. Again, I don't really experiment that much with like colored liners or anything. I just need the basics. So I carry Inglot liners. I really love them a lot. Gel liners are by far the most sanitary version of liners. 
sharpeners even more than actual pencils because you have to scoop these out and put them on a palette. So yeah, Inglot 77 is the black one. Then 90 is like a really, really deep brown, still matte though. And then I have a brow gel up top. This is the one that I use when I really need to hold like the brows in place or spike them up or something. Um, this one is the e.l.f. brow gel. It's pretty much a dupe for the Anastasia brow freeze that I used to carry for the longest time. I just don't use it super often. Next, I have a whole bunch of these little sifter containers and they are from Amazon, of course. I have four different colors of loose powders in here. I mainly just use loose powders. I don't have a ton of like actual pressed powders in my kit. So I have two Huda Beauty powders. I have one in the shade Sugar Cookie and then the other one is in the shade Pound Cake. Pound Cake is by far my most used one. I also have one size Beauty Translucent Honey and then I also have the Translucent Dark one too. Basically covers all my skin tone ranges. Then I have all my eyeshadows. So I carry the Natasha Denona Glam Palette. This one is all my cool tone kind of shades and it has like some champagne tones in it too. I also carry the Patrick Ta Major Dimension eyeshadow palette, which I really want to get the second version, which is the rose gold one. This is just the first one that has all the warm tones in it. And then I also have the Makeup by Mario, the Master Mattes. Next, I have the ColourPop um, palette in here. This is the Smoke and Roses palette. And I just depotted all the colors and then put them into this Artist Kit Company palette. Those are for all my pink shades right now. I have all my colorful shades. These are all Viseart cosmetic shadows. So I have the dark mattes palette on this side and then the colorful mattes on this side. So just in case somebody wants a colorful look. Then this is a whole entire palette with blushes and bronzers for me. I have powder bronzers over here. These are all Huda Beauty glowish bronzers. And then all of these came from the Rising Star Cheek palette from NARS. I used an Arbor Press and repressed them into here. I'll go ahead and link up my blushes and bronzers video for you guys from the holiday series that I did on these because it shows you guys how I depotted it and like repressed them. I'll link that video up above because I'm sure there's going to be questions. Then back here, I have my false lashes. I keep them in this view set taxi palette. You can get them off of camera ready cosmetics. I cut all the individual lashes up instead of carrying packs of them. That way I can fit like a ton of lashes in here and I don't have to worry about refilling as often. My favorite ones are the Ardell naked lashes. I use them the most often. These are the Ardell 420 lashes, just very short and wispy, almost look like lash extensions. These are the Ardell 421s. They just look like this. They're a little bit longer. And then I got these lashes from Timu. They're obviously a lot more dramatic. They're just really fluffy and wispy in case anybody wants like super dramatic lashes. Otherwise, I usually double stack the 421s and those also work too. Just keep in mind that you can actually customize things like that. You can double stack them. It doesn't always have to be like a separate lash that you buy. That's the one thing that I've kind of learned as a makeup artist over time is that you always need to work with less and that'll ultimately make you a better makeup artist and it won't be as costly because you don't need as many things. Then over here, I have more pressed powders. These are all the MAC Studio Fix powders. I am missing a few shades in between like I need to get like NC20 or something right now this is the ones I have so I have NW55 which is like a really deep kind of shade can probably also work as a bronzer for like really deep skin tones too I have the shade NC45.5 which looks like this, very good for olive kind of tones. Then I have NW18, looks like this, a little bit lighter tone. NWs are all of the pink or cool tone ones, and then all the NCs are the warm tone, yellow tone ones. And then NC10 looks like that. And then I also have um, NW25. And that one looks like that. I also have this MAC highlighter that's like randomly chilling over here. It's the mineralized skin finish and this is in the shade Light Scapade. I usually use this on like mature skin because it's not super sparkly or glittery like the other highlighters are that I carry. All of these in the section are my foundations and concealers. I use very, very minimal products for complexion because they're the most expensive to carry in your kit. I only have about like five to six shades of like each type of the foundation and then I just mix all of them. Best tip for foundations, buy the lightest and the darkest one and like maybe maybe two or three shades in between and then you mix all the rest of them and that's all you need. You don't need every single color in the range. And that way everything can be very, very easily condensed. I do also have all of them in these airless pump containers which have clogged on me. Don't know if I wanna keep them in here, but for right now, most of them are working for me. So starting over here, um, I have three body highlighters. They're like liquid body highlighters. Two of these are the Melanie Mills Body Gleams. Um, so I have it an Opal and Peach Deluxe. And I have one from Item Beauty, which is in the shade Zap. And that's like a deeper bronze kind of color. So I have all my skin tones covered. And then I have two from Face Atelier, which are the foundation brands that I carry. But this one is in the shade two. And then this one is in the shade three. I'll use these for body highlighting my brides. Um, all my foundations are silicone based, by the way. I just like silicone based ones because they tend to sit better on like mature skin, fill in fine lines and wrinkles a little bit better and do better with pores. And silicone based foundations are the same foundation bases that airbrush makeup is made out of. They're just in a liquid form instead of coming out of a compressor. And since they all have the same base, 
this to each other. I can intermix any one of my foundations and it'll work together without separating. A lot of the times when I hear makeup artists having an issue with products separating, it's because they don't get their bases right. You'll have to like look up the ingredient list in every single one of them and just see what the first ingredient is. It's either the first or the second ingredients. Like sometimes it'll say water, but then it'll have like a silicone after that. So you'll just have to make sure that you know like what the base is. I do also carry all satin finish foundations. Since all of them are satin finish foundations, I usually can prep for oily or more dry skin and switch up the bases and then just set with more or less powder depending on the skin type. And then I just pick based on like what coverage a person wants. The reason I carry Face Atelier foundations though is because they have a really phenomenal shade range. They last for a really long time and they also have primers built into them. So you technically don't even need it to use a primer if you don't have time to do it and you can just cut out a step. But they also have shade adjusters, which I really, really like. For the actual shades, I have zero, which is like the white shade. That could technically be a shade adjuster. Then I have 0 0.5, 1, 4, 6, and 12. I normally have eight as well, um, but I just ran out of it and haven't restocked, but I do also carry eight usually. And then these are some of the shade adjusters that I carry from them. Pretty much like a lot of the primary colors. So I have the heat adjuster, which is the red one, make things a little bit more of a red undertone. Then I have the olive adjuster, which is really good for those with like either Asian or Indian skin tones. And then I have blaze, which is yellow. Then the blue one I recently started carrying, but this one's really essential for neutralizing anything. So like if something's like too orange or something, you can mix in a little bit of blue and then it'll tone down the oranginess a little bit. By the way, the Face Atelier foundations are a medium to buildable full coverage. I would say more on the medium side though, and they just look very skin-like. I would say that the Charlotte Tilbury ones right here, which are the Charlotte Tilbury Light Wonders are my dewiest foundations just because they are lighter coverage, but um, I don't use them like super often. So this is the Charlotte Tilbury Light Wonder. This is in the shade one. And then I have 4.5, eight and 10. I also did carry six at one point in time too, but I ran out of it. So those are the ones that I have for now, but to be completely honest, I don't know if I love them. I think I might switch to the Dior face and body ones because I've heard really great things about those. They're just really pricey and I don't get a pro discount on that. <laughs> then these are all of my full coverage foundations. These are the NARS Natural Radiant Foundations. I feel like a lot of different makeup artists have them in their kits. I carry Mont Blanc, which is the lightest one. Then I carry the shade Santa Fe, Tahoe. Then I have Vanatu and Marquise which I kind of want New Caledonia instead of Marquise's because this one's a little bit too orange sometimes. And New Caledonia is like an olive kind of tone, which I feel like would match more people. And then this is the shade Zambi, which is the darkest foundation that I have. And then over here, I have the Too Faced Born This Way concealers. And these are the only concealers that I have in my kit technically, like they're actual like skin tone shades rather than the color corrector. Because I feel like this is the only concealer that I ever need. I only need four shades and I can intermix all of them. Like concealers don't, you don't need like a ton of shades going on. I carry the shade Cloud, which is the lightest shade. Then I have the shade light beige. I have chestnut and then I also have cocoa. But yeah, between the four of them though, I just mix them all together and can create whatever shade that I need it to be. And then with the shade adjusters, I can also adjust them to be like more of a cooler undertone or a warmer undertone too. And then the last thing that I have inside of my actual kit um, is all of the liquid blushes and the glosses. For the blushes, I carry the Rare Beauty liquid blushes. I love these things. They're the soft pinch liquid blushes. And these are the shades that I carry. Um, I also usually carry the shade Bliss, but I ran out of that one and I need to restock, but it's like a light peach kind of color. So so this is in the shade Believe, and then I have Love, Encourage, and then Grace. Actually, now that I think about it, Bliss is very similar to like this color lip gloss. It's just like a light peachy tone normally. Um, but these are all the NYX Butter Glosses. I love the formula of these. So I have the shade Fortune Cookie, which is by far my favorite and most used. Um, I've been using this a little bit more often though. This is Spiked Toffee. It's like a deeper mauve brown sort of tone. And then I also have Creme Brulee, which is a pink one, and then just a clear lip gloss, which I definitely need more of. So yeah, that is honestly the main part of my kit. So let me go on to the brushes. Okay, before I cover the actual brushes, I'm gonna talk about this really quickly because technically this is part of like the way I store my brushes in my case. This is the Danny's Pouch by Makeup Forever. It has this little elastic between it so you can't lose both pieces. I just put them on my station. Then I have dog poo bags in here that I carry. I also do have dogs myself, so they're just handy to have around. But I'll unroll this and stick them in one side. And then that is what I use for my trash can on site. I always think it's essential to have somewhere to put your trash can, whether it's like an actual garbage bag that you're putting and tying around somewhere to throw your trash into, or you can use one of those pop-up car trash 
trash cans. I've seen makeup artists use those too. Either way though, you do not want trash just like sitting on your workstation for people, especially when you have like eight people back to back. Like things can get very messy. The other side that I'm not using for the trash can is going to hold the brushes for the client that is currently in my chair. And then when I'm done with them, I'm scooping them out and then putting them in that mesh pouch that you saw earlier. That's for my dirty brushes. So then I can have a clean new set of brushes for each client. I don't spot clean on site because it's not 100% hygienic. You do have to deep clean your brushes um, just to let you know, like you can't just rely on spot cleaners because they don't clean them all the way. So I keep enough sets of brushes for however many people that I'm doing. Um, this actually holds a crap ton of brushes. I mean, like I have a bunch of brushes in here. This is the, my Kitco brush buddy. I got this off of Camera Ready Cosmetics. So this is the, my big brush buddy, which technically is just this inside pouch with the six compartments on the inside of it. And then the brush buddy base is all the pockets on the outside and it just like fits in it. I do like the fact also that it has like these side pockets too. You can store things. So I have the dog poo bags in here. I usually put my wallet and other things in there too. Like I carry a little pencil sharpener with me. And then on the other side, I carry the Cinema Secrets brush cleaner, which I don't use that often. Um, just if I'm like in a bind for some reason, I carry extra business cards. I also have a square reader that I can plug into the headphone jack of my phone. And that's how I take credit card payments. So in the front pocket here, I have all the acrylic palettes and the tools that I need to work with. All the acrylic palettes are from the artist kit company. So I have this one, which is like a liquid palette that they have. Um, I use this for touch-ups. So like if somebody comes back to me and is like, hey, I have a lash that's popping off or I need eyeliner that needs touched up. I'll use this little thing for touch-ups at the very end. I don't usually use that like while I'm working though on people just because there's not enough room for things. Metal mixing spatula is from Amazon. Then all the rest of these are from the artist kit company. So this is the liquid 2.0 palette, I believe. So it has like these two large spots and then the same size as this one but like in an actual palette instead. So I have those, you just can never have enough palettes, especially if you're like in a bind one of these times and like you can't get eyeliner off the palette, you can just throw one of them in the dirty bag and then use a different one. So that's why I always have like different clean ones ready to go. These are the other acrylic palettes. They're just flat palettes like this. Then these are the tools that I carry. Right now I have the Kiss Lash Glue. This is the super stronghold one. I really like this one a lot. Dries super quickly and sticks for a really long time. Cuticle scissors um, for cutting lashes. And then also if somebody needs to cut like tags off dresses, which that's happened multiple different times. I have a pair of scissors. Then this is a lash applicator from Tarte. I usually never apply lashes with my hands. I've always applied them with lash applicators. And then in the top section, I'm not gonna go over all the brushes that I have because I did this in one of my um, holiday series videos. So if you guys wanna see like what specific brushes I have, go ahead and check that out. For right now though, this is what it looks like. It's just organized in six different compartments. Foundation brushes, like denser ones here, powder brushes. Then I have the highlighting or primer brushes here. All the fluffy eyebrows brushes, eyebrow brushes, liner brushes, and then the concealer brushes and lip brushes over here. So this is honestly pretty good for about like 10 different people to be totally honest. Um, so I always am able to have like a clean set of brushes for every single person that I do. And I don't have to take the time to spot clean on site. Again, not 100% hygienic, but then also saves you like about five minutes in between each person to like clean brushes. And I could just move on immediately to the next person. I think I got done with that a lot quicker than I've ever gotten through any of my makeup kit videos. I will be providing all the links or as many links as I can get um, for all the items that I mentioned below. I'll be also listing out like foundations and the colors that I keep and everything. So if you guys want like a master list of everything and you don't wanna go back to the video to reference it and try to find it, then I'll go ahead and just link everything for you guys. Hopefully that helps. Again, please don't just copy what I have. Everybody works in a different way. Everybody has a different kit and different preferences. Please do what works best for you and your clientele. With that being said though, I hope you guys really enjoyed seeing what was in my freelance kit. If you guys did, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up on the video as well as also subscribing down to my channel if you do like makeup artist content because I do produce a lot of that on my channel. I've been doing a lot of vlogs recently because I've been in the middle of wedding season. I do vlog all of my applications, me going on site and doing weddings. So if you guys are interested in that sort of content, then definitely go ahead and subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos. And as always, I hope you guys are having an amazing day and I will talk to you guys in my next video. All right, bye.